Today is a really special day because today I have finally, finally finished my taxes. Jokes aside, obviously the 1,000 subscriber thing is awesome and I'm so excited about having reached that milestone, but that is not why you're watching this video. You're watching this video to know a little bit about my journey from zero to 1,000, to hear my hot tips, I do have a few interesting ones for you, and to take a look at my juicy analytics. So let's get into it. So from the very beginning, I posted my first video on YouTube on June 20th, 2019. And that very first video was honestly really difficult for me to upload. At the time, I had just started teaching videography at McGill University and uploading to a YouTube channel for me felt really exposing. Like these videos could be seen by my students. And even though I was a professional videographer, I was not a professional YouTuber, so all of the stuff would probably not be very good at first. I was very cognizant of that. That was a big obstacle for me to overcome, and I felt like the disconnect of traveling finally allowed me to overcome that obstacle and start posting to YouTube. So the first few videos on my channel are this travel vlog. When Kayla and I went on vacation to Southeast Asia, I started vlogging a little bit. And the funny thing is I didn't even enjoy travel vlogging. It's not what I wanted to do. It's not what I want to do now. We traveled for a while. Eventually we made our way back to Montreal. And when I came back, the first thing I started posting was video content, which is what I realized that I wanted to be doing the entire time. At that time as well, in order to improve my craft, I was contributing to a Reddit group called Small YT Channel, which is essentially a bunch of creators on this channel that post and give each other feedback. It's definitely not a way to grow your channel or to try to get the word out there. Don't try it for that approach because it's not gonna work. But if you're looking to improve your craft and get the feedback from people in completely different facets of YouTube, which can be very enlightening, to be honest. I mean, I'm a videographer, professional videographer, so certain things I was already good at, like camera, like knowing how a camera works, for example, but YouTube is sort of its own beast and having other people's insight can be very valuable. So that's my first tip. Try finding a community of creators. It can be small YT channel, it could be anything else, but essentially somewhere that you can post and get feedback and improve your craft. At this point, it's the second half of 2019. We make our way back from our travels and now I know what I want to be doing and I feel confident doing it. So I start posting videos about videography, how to use Final Cut in Spanish, and then just generally some things that I didn't find search results for. Something you need to know about me is I'm an avid YouTuber and not like as a video creator, but as someone who actually uses the platform. I am always on there. I love watching YouTube content. And whenever I want to buy equipment, the first place I check is YouTube. Whenever I would search for something and I wouldn't find a result, then I would write it down and I would make a video about it because I knew that I could not be the only person who is looking this up. There must be other people. And here's the proof. One of the first videos I made that blew up, or I mean blew up, you know, as far as a small channel will blow up, uh, it's called Installing the Newer Wall Mount, and it currently sits at around 10,000 something views. This was not a video that blew up overnight. It slowly racks up views whenever someone is searching for it. And I have another video that's sort of like this, how to replace the Lacey D2 hard drive, which is sitting at nearly 17,000 views right now. This is another example of something I looked up, wasn't able to find it, and then just figured it out and made a video about it myself. The reason why I bring this up is because when you first start your YouTube channel, YouTube is not really gonna push your content. From what I've researched of the algorithm, you sort of need to prove yourself first that you're able to get organic views. And something like this is a great way to get organic views because YouTube is the second most popular search engine in the world. And this is definitely content agnostic. You know, if you're in gaming, maybe people want to know how to overcome like a boss, for example. People in Every facet of YouTube are searching for things, whether it's gaming or makeup tutorials, or in my case, videography. So that's what my next tip is. If you're trying to grow your channel, make videos on search inquiries for which you are unable to find videos. At this point, I'm starting to understand what works as far as viewership, and I try to make content that people are looking up and I try to make content about equipment because that's what people look up largely in this space. I have some gear reviews such as the Astera PixelTube AX1 review and how to use, which got roughly 7,000 views 
or comparison videos such as which is which Aperture 120D or RE650, which is sitting around 10,000 views, or newer versus Matthew C stand worth the price, which is currently sitting around 17,000 views. The good thing about these videos is that they're slow burners. To this day, they continue racking up views and subscribers very slowly. So in 2020, I posted a total of 17 videos and I grew my channel from 92 subscribers on January 1st, all the way to 324 subscribers on December 31st. So that's pretty good. Since there was not much to do during the pandemic, I was really just making YouTube videos. And I realized that before when I was posting to Instagram and my website and Facebook, what I was doing is really spreading myself too thin. Now I actually have more time and I'm dedicating it to a single platform and I'm growing that single platform, which is the one that I want to. So then the following year, 2021, things really got crazy. I think everyone shook themselves off of that pandemic funk and realized like, we gotta get to work. And especially the field that I was in, which was videography and live streaming really started exploding. And so work just took over my life. And at the same time, at the very beginning of the year, um, we had a fire in our apartment and we ended up moving three different times because, you know, we had to move to an Airbnb and then or a hotel first and then an Airbnb and then ultimately another apartment. Oh yeah, and also we had just adopted Mia at that time. So things were all over the place. I really only put out three videos that year. But here's the thing about those slow burning videos that I mentioned earlier. They sort of kept my channel afloat during that whole next year because I started that year with 326 subscribers. And even though I just posted three times, I ended that year with 511 subscribers, which if you think about it, is not all that different from the growth of the previous year. Obviously, if I had continued posting, it probably would have grown more, but it was really nice to see that even though I was able to take a step back, my channel was still sort of, you know, working in the background on my behalf. Now that following year, 2022, was pretty slow as well. I also only posted three videos, but there's this one video I posted, which is very interesting and I wanna talk about. That video is called Ditching Lumix Goodbye BGH1s. This video was important because it's when I noticed that YouTube really started pushing my content. I guess I made that threshold of organic views and then they really started pushing, which is fantastic. As you can see, I posted that video uh, on December 5th and it was racking up search results as per usual. And then on what, the end of the year, boom, just huge, boost in viewership and then since then it's sort of been increasing slowly over time as well. So that was really exciting to see that YouTube was finally pushing my content and so with that information I in 2023 I started posting a lot more and I started being a little bit more out there with the type of content that I would post. So for example I felt comfortable posting camera comparison videos or camera review videos that I knew wouldn't be completely drowned out by other creators' content, which is something that used to happen to me in the past. So I started this year, January 1st, 2023, with 587 subscribers. I've posted 10 videos so far at the point of recording this video, and now I have 10,010 subscribers, which is very exciting, to me at least. So let's look at some more analytics before we wrap this up. I always love seeing the back end of other people's YouTube, so hopefully this is exciting to you as well. Um, just so you can sort of get an idea of what my channel is accomplishing in the past 48 hours, roughly 600 views. It depends on like my last video didn't really do so well, but usually I would say between 600 and 1,000. Um, now I've got 10,000 views per, what is this, in the past 28 days. Watch hours are around 500. Um, subscriber count has gone down because last month I posted two videos that did super well. Uh, can I see the monetization stuff? I'm not monetized, but um, yeah, here. So I finally hit the 1000 subscriber mark. Woo. And here, as far as public watch hours, I'm about halfway there. So this, I remember talking to my friend, Nicola Raj, who at the time had just reached a thousand subscribers. And I was like, wow, that's so exciting. Like, are you monetized? And she was like, no, because this public watch hours is really way harder to reach than the 1000 subscribers. And now I feel it, <laughs> I, I completely understand. One more analytic I would like to bring up is the CRT click-through rate. This is something that has actually changed for me 
quite drastically since YouTube started pushing my content. And I think it's good for the general creator population to know, which is since my content has started reaching a wider audience, my click-through rate has sort of suffered a little bit. And YouTube does have this indicator that says, this video is now reaching a wider audience. And so your click-through rate might not be what it usually is. But what I've started looking as well, and this video is a good example of that, this video is called My Pro Sony Blackmagic Livestream Workflow, which is obviously very niche. So this is the click-through rate for that video and it's averaged weekly. So when I first released it, that first week, it was at around 3.2%, which if you look up is not great. And I was like, Ugh, that video, I guess it's just, it's so niche that not a lot of people are gonna click on it. And then eventually it found an audience and it got really good, I guess. And now it seems to have sort of settled at like a more normal click-through rate percentage. Just because a video isn't immediately doing well, doesn't mean it's not going to. Some videos take time to get off the ground, others explode really quickly and then just trail off into nothing. Every video is a little bit different. And so I've seen YouTubers repost videos in the past because they didn't get the viewership they expected right off the bat. I don't think that's worth doing. I think that if a video is good, it's gonna find its audience. The YouTube algorithm is pretty good at that and it will find the audience. It might take not a few days, it might take a month, it might take multiple months. The point is don't obsess about your videos on the short term because it's really the big picture that counts. Now, my last two pieces of advice come sort of bundled together. And the reason why I wanna bundle them together is because they're sort of contradictory. The first one is make quality videos, which sounds obvious I know, but there's a reason why I'm saying that. The second one is post regularly. Now I have found that since I've started posting regularly this year, my audience has become a lot more engaged with me. And I'm not just talking about my audience online, my friends, the friends of mine who watch my videos, they'll text me and be like, hey, I watched your video today, like love the video. And I'm realizing that by being a regular upload, I'm really creating that connection with my audience, which is very important. That being said, you do also need to make quality videos. And in order to make a quality video, it might take you more time to do. So you sort of have to find that good medium of posting regularly, what I'm doing is one week, but sometimes I push it to two weeks depending on my schedule and whether I think the video needs a little bit more work. So it's a balance between posting regularly and making high quality content. Because in the long term, I think high quality content is king. If you're making good videos, people will watch them and people will continue to watch them over time. But in the short term, posting regularly will really grow your channel. So again, it's the balance between the two. You have to see what works for you. I'll wrap up this video by leaving some big picture analytics here. This is the past 365 days. So any of you who are like really into the nitty gritty can take a look at what I'm seeing here on the back end. If I forgot to mention something as far as analytics are concerned, drop me a comment. Maybe I'll make another video. I'm more than happy to share any of this with you. In the meantime, if you're still watching this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe. It really makes a big difference. I'm forever grateful. And if you do hit subscribe, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.